Kamala Harris run for president is a moment that brings both a gift and a curse to our community. On one hand, it shows that we have the power to break away from toxic traditions. But on the other hand, it also highlights how deeply we're still tied to those same toxic traditions. In this episode, I will walk you through three examples on how Kamala Harris run is a gift reflecting progress and empowerment in our community. But I'll also dive into three reasons why it's a curse, showing how we continue to fall into those same traps that held us back for years. This is a conversation we need to have. Kamala Harris, the gift and the curse. Welcome or welcome back to the Broken Traditions Podcast with your host, Laron, aka Real Rap Ron. On this week's episode, we are going to discuss Kamala Harris run for presidency and how the reaction of Kamala Harris running for presidency is a gift and a curse within the black community. I'm going to give you guys three reasons why it's a gift and it shows progress within the black community. And I also want to give you guys three reasons on why it's a curse and why it shows a step back or why it shows that we hold on to toxic traditions within the black community but before we get into that man here on broken traditions we're about breaking away from traditions a toxic black culture if you went to that kind of content you have that kind of mindset please join the movement and by joining the movement you can subscribe to the youtube by joining the movement you can join the patreon or become a member of the youtube membership starts at 4.99 on both platforms and on patreon they go a bit higher and on patreon you guys get free gifts uh, within memberships that cost higher, right? So, for example, you guys can get one of these hoodies. It says, uh, traditions shouldn't cage us, break free, be brave. So, you guys like that kind of merch, you want to support the movement, you could become a member, or you could just go to my website, www.brokentraditions.com. You could buy uh, mugs, you could buy t shirts. Also, you guys come across this on Rumble, Facebook um instagram tiktok please join the movement by following me on those respectable platforms also if you guys are listening to this on iHeartRadio, uh apple uh youtube podcast spotify you know please leave a review broke your traditions uh definitely appreciates when you leave reviews and also we would definitely appreciate if you leave a five-star review we don't want to accept anything less than a five-star review but all jokes aside just let me know how you feel about the episode. Let me know how you feel about the podcast. I right now will apologize. My voice is kind of nasy because I'm getting over a cold. So please forgive me in that aspect, right? I went to Mexico and got a cold out there. That's another story for another day. Another thing I want to mention too, man. Shout out to the people that's on the YouTube premiere. Shout out to you guys. Last week, I was not able to be a part of the premiere. I was at, like I said, I was in Mexico. And during the premiere, I was at the airport flying back home. And I did not have no service. I could not log on. The Wi-Fi at the airport was trash. So I was not able to listen to it. Shout out to uh, Mike Has Bad Knees. He telling that I was too bougie to be a part of the conversation. That wasn't the case. I just wasn't able to be a part of the case. So shout out to Mike Has Bad Knees. One of the channel members of the Broken Traditions channel member membership on the YouTube, right? So shout out to Mike Has Bad Knees. And also, I want to give another shout out from last week's podcast episode to Joseph smith 7087 he left a comment that i think i might be using this as a future podcast episode right so i love your guys comment i love you guys feedback within the conversations and sometimes your comment could be an uh, episode for a future reference right or just a future talking point for another episode so joseph smith 787 says something very direct very short but very impactful. So let me go to this comment real quick. Joseph said, black culture, embarrassed by nothing, yet offended by everything. I'm not gonna lie, you about to get yourself a nice little BT bomb right here. Let me give you the BT bomb. There you go for that comment. That comment was heavy. Black culture, embarrassed by nothing, yet offended by everything. Whew. That's that's big right there, that's big. So let's get into this week's episode, man. Kamala Harris, the gift and the curse, right? Disclaimer. Um, you guys see the thumbnail. You guys might see the title. One thing I always ask, Raphael Sadiq voice. All I ask of you is 
listen to the full episode in its entirety so you guys can understand what I'm talking about. I know how some people see things get triggered and want to just throw their opinions on something. I get it. I know that's the way the algorithm works, but I'm trying to be more thought provoking, more impactful in conversations, right? Also, I would say this. Um, this episode is not going to be about Kamala Harris running for president nothing about like kamala harris directly towards her right you can find all that information all over the internet everybody got something to say whether it's good bad or different i'm not coming with that right i'm this episode is going to be me holding the mirror up to the culture or how we reacted to kamala harris not what kamala harris is doing as far as how she's uh going to be the president or not be the president on going against Donald Trump. we're not going to talk about that right not going to discuss that you can find that all over the place i just want to have a more thought-provoking conversation on our reaction to kamala harris announcing that she's running for president and how when joe biden said that he's going to drop out the race right so july 21st 2024 that's when joe biden announced that he's not going to uh continue to run for presidency and instead his uh successor is going to be vice president kamala harris right which to me makes sense because we only got like less than 100 days to vote for the presidency. And why would you want to put somebody up there that's new with a whole new ideas and everything to go against Donald Trump? So I think that that was the best move, in my opinion. But I digress on that. Kamala Harris becoming the presidential nominee on the Democratic side. Right. There was a lot of different reactions that came about this and. That's what this episode is going to be about. No, so we're going to start with the gift on how black culture, our reaction to Kamala Harris showed that we could break away from toxic traditions within black culture, especially when it comes to politics. The second part of the episode is going to call the curse on how we still attach to toxic traditions when it comes to certain things and our reaction to things, right? So the gift, right? The gift within black culture is something that started before Kamala Harris announced that she was going to run for presidency and before Joe Biden stepped down. Let me give you guys the, uh, I guess, the layout. So when Joe Biden and Donald Trump had the, the debate on June 27th, after that, after Joe Biden's performance, there was a big push for Joe Biden to step down and not run for presidency. You see other uh, Democrats coming out saying that Joe Biden needs to step down. You see people who are big um, donors to the Democratic Party, such as um, Reed Hastings of one of the co-founders of Netflix saying that Joe Biden needed to step down. So there was a lot of people that wanted Joe Biden to step down from this race, right? But the thing is, they never announced who they wanted to replace him. Part of Joe Biden stepping down the quiet part that they did not want to say was also they wanted Kamala Harris to be off the ticket. They wanted Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to step down. Now, this brings the first part of the gift. And this shows how collectively a group of black women use their power, use their power to make sure that Joe Biden and or Kamala Harris was still the nominee for the Democrats when it comes to the presidential election. There was a group of black women that was led by the former mayor of Atlanta, Georgia, Keisha Lance Bottoms. And this group of women flat out said, if you guys replace Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, black women will not vote for Democrats in this election. Let me tell you why this is important. Think about 1,400 black women, right? 1,400 black women sign this letter saying that we want Biden Harris on the ticket. So you want Biden Harris on the ticket. Black women said, if we do not get Biden Harris on the ticket, we will not vote. We will not vote for this upcoming election. Black women, black women vote 90% Democrat as a collective. So that is the biggest group of people who vote for one party at that rate, right? Black women, 90%. They use their power to get what they want. They did not want somebody else on a ticket. 
They said, we will pull away. We will boycott this election and we will not be a part of it if you take off Biden and Harris. So the compromise was what? Take off Biden. I would say this, knowing the impact of black women voting for Democrats, that was a power move to get Kamala Harris into that, that position. You think how tight this race is going to be, certain states like Georgia, that you're going to pull away the black women vote? You really think that the Democrats was going to make that move once that letter came out? They're saying that, no, we don't care what these black women are saying. I've never seen us pull our power together like that in a way. I've never seen that before. Um, I, I applaud those women. I think that they got what they want out of it. I applaud them. I definitely applaud them. And I think that that shows that we could break away from not using our voice and our power and instead of just accepting anything. I think that's a gift. That's a gift that we we have not seen that before. I give Keisha Lance Bottoms and the other women who was part of that um, that letter props for getting what they want. That's a big move to put out a notion that we're not going to be a part of your election or what you want if you don't do what we say. You work for us type of thing. I, I appreciate that. The second part, right? The second part why this is a gift, and I'm not going to lie, this is also going to translate to the curse. But the second part why that this is a gift is because once Kamala Harris announced that they she's going to run for president, there was a Zoom call. There were two Zoom calls or two video calls. First with um, a Zoom call with 44,000 black women. And 44,000 black women got behind Kamala Harris and raised a million dollars under three hours for her presidential campaign. After black women did that, there was another video call, a Zoom call with black men who raised $1.3 million under four hours for Kamala Harris' campaign. So we're talking about close to $2.5 million between black men and black women to put behind a, um, a political candidate. I think that this is a gift, but like I said, this part is also going to be on the curse side, but let me tell you why I think this is a gift. When it comes to U.S. politics, right? U.S. politics works like this. If you put money behind a politician, more than likely that politician will do right by that group, right? And within black culture, within black politics, collectively, I mean, individually, some people do donate and trying to make, the, make sure their voices are heard, but collectively, we don't do that. And this shows the first time that we could put money behind a politician that, quote unquote, we believe in, right? Between two different calls, under four hours each, two and a half million dollars was raised for this political... Um, for this political race for Kamala Harris. I think that's a gift because that's how things get done. You know, those who donate the most get the most results when it comes to laws, when it comes to legislation, when it comes to anything. Those who donate the most get the most. Now, I'm not going to lie, $2.3 million is not that much when it comes to the politics, right? But it's a start to show that we could do that. It's just a start to show that we could break away from that tradition of just voting and hoping that these politicians will do right by us. It's voting, laying down, and hoping that things would be right done right by us. It, it breaks away from that. It breaks away from that tradition. And I think that that shows a right step in the trajectory. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else is doing it. We know that, right? This is not like other countries. I think, from what I understand, over in, like in um, I think Scotland, the most of presidential or a most a political candidate could raise it thirteen thousand dollars it's not like that in the states not like that in the states but here that could be done and those who raise the most get the most that's how it goes right so i think that was a good look that was a good look to show that we, that could be done right like i said it's a start it's a stepping stone from what i understand the um the white women with Harris and the white dudes with Harris raise more money, but it shows that it could be done. It shows that it could be done. So to me, it's a step. But like I said, I'll explain later on the episode on why that this is also a curse. 
the last reason why I think this is a gift with Kamala Harris and now a reaction to Kamala Harris. The reason why I say that this is a gift is the fact that there are black voters who are putting it out there that they will not vote for Kamala Harris just because she's black. This is such a gift. This is probably the biggest one to me. I'm so happy to see this, right? We could go back to uh, 2008 when black people voted for Barack Obama. I'll put the link in the show notes so you guys can check this out for yourselves. But when Barack Obama ran for presidency in 2008, 95% of black people voted for Barack Obama. 95%. Leaving only 5% of black people who thought that somebody else was a better president than Barack Obama. And I would make the argument, out of that 95%, I would say at least 90% voted for him just because he was black voting with identity politics is probably one of the worst things within black culture and that is something that we need to break away from and seeing people saying that they are not voting for kamala harris loud and they're saying that they don't care that she's a black woman and voting for black people what does that get us with identity politics is perhaps one of the biggest gifts within this presidential run with kamala harris in my opinion Yeah, raising the money was good. Showing that we could get behind a politician financially or donating, that's good. Um, The black women who use their power to saying that, you know what, this is what we want, that's good. But to me, this is number one. This is number one. Black voters get burned by black politicians all the time. We vote unconsciously for a black politician just because they're black and they're Democrat. Give you a couple examples. In my last episode, I talked about Mayor Brandon Johnson and Eric Adams, how the black community got behind these two because they're black men and then Democrat, and how Mayor Brandon Johnson and Mayor Eric Adams is giving most of their resources from their respective cities to the migrants, to the legal migrants, or the deficit that these two cities are seeing is going to be astronomical where there's so many cutbacks is going on because of the migrants and their support of the migrants and their support of having the migrants coming in and keeping these two cities sanctuary cities. These two men, Brandon Johnson and Eric Adams, could put into law that this is no longer a sanctuary city. They could do that because the the mayor, is it was the mayor of Chicago, the name... Um, slips of mind. I'll put it in the show notes. But it was a mayor of Chicago who made Chicago a sanctuary city. So if that mayor could do it, why Mayor Brandon Johnson can't make it not a sanctuary city for the people living in Chicago? Seeing that type of voting habits showed that black people did not get anything for their vote. Another person I mentioned on the last episode, uh, Tiffany Henyard, who got 80, 82% of the black vote or 82% of the vote within village of Dalton. To them, it seemed like it was more important to get the first black female mayor of the village rather than somebody that's qualified. They're not qualified, baby. Right, that's so that's all good. When she got into office, it was a $2 million surplus within the budget. And now during her time, they have $5 million in the deficit. A $7 million swing from this woman. I'll say this, man. It's, it's a breath of fresh air of seeing that people on TikTok, X, um youtube instagram uh facebook basically saying that no we're not voting for this woman just because she's black oh notably the most viral video to me i think of a black woman saying that she's not supporting um kamala harris was amanda sills amanda sills is a never trumper amanda sills is somebody who is uh i guess more left-leaning to say but she put out this video check this out put in clips of Kamala Harris stating things. I don't need politicians to state things. I need politicians to do things. When I met with Kamala Harris after she summoned me, I said to her straight up, you talk out two sides of your neck and we don't know what you're talking about. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Kamala Harris who's trying to shut me the fuck up. Because I told her straight up that I feel like she is disingenuous in her messaging. And 
she said to me, well, you're being too critical. And I said, I am a voter. I'm supposed to be critical. That's my job. And I want to see actions. She said, well, how am I supposed to talk about uh, racism in America without talk calling Americans racist? I said, well, first of all, there are many, there are many racist Americans, but there's also policy, legislation, institution, and systems that are racist that need to be addressed. They need to be addressed. And if you're not going to do that in an actualized way and in a loud, bold way, people will never really know where you're coming from. Well, you can't tell me how I feel. So I'm not telling you how you feel. I'm telling you how you sound. I'm telling you how you sound. Okay? The truth is that you should always, always question your source and what are their intentions. This is important, man. We can't no longer just support a politician or blindly, unconsciously support a politician just because they have black skin or they have dark skin. Our votes need to be earned, not just given. And seeing black people saying this all over the internet, don't care about the backlash. I mean, people are coming for Amanda Sales. They coming for her. I give her props. I give her credit. This is something that need to be said. I love that she said this. This is, we need more of this. This is a gift. This is the biggest gift. You know how Christmas coming around, you were a kid and you got like, you know, the socks, the sweaters, all that, all that stuff under the tree. This right here is the Nintendo 64. This right here is the PlayStation 5. This right here is the biggest gift. The biggest gift under the tree that you're going to be using time and time again, right? The other two things I mentioned, perhaps that would never happen again. I don't see that happen. That's just, that's just something that happened, in my opinion. Just happenstance. But this right here, with us saying that we're not just going to support, blindly support a politician just because they're black, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's the biggest gift of all. But let's now get into the second part of this video, the curse. When the announcement was made that Kamala Harris is now going to be taking the place of Joe Biden in the presidential election, there were so many toxic traditions that popped up within the black community and that brings us to this part of the episode. Now, the first part of the curse that I want to talk about, I want to piggyback on the second part of the gift, right? And that's the money that was raised for Kamala Harris. I said it was a great idea that the black people came together, 44,000 black people came together to raise money for Kamala Harris. I said that was a great idea. That was beautiful, right? But the reason why that this is also a curse because it shows blind support to a politician. It shows blind support to a politician. And the reason why I say that it shows blind support to a politician because those two calls, right? I wasn't a part of them, but I spoke to people who were on the women's call and I spoke to people who were on the men's call. And one thing I took away from those two conversations I had was that this call was not a call about policies. This call was a fundraiser of propping up Kamala Harris that she could possibly become the first black woman of color president of the United States. There were no policies. There was nothing to get behind as far as policies. It was just blind support. And within blind support, because this is a sister that went to Howard uh, University, HBCU, she's an AKA. Yeah, she's an AKA. So she's part of sorority. Black folks within a few hours raised up a million dollars on two different calls. $2.3 million within uh, one three-hour span and one four-hour span at two different times. There was no policies. You raised money because you wanted the symbolism. That is a problematic. That is a curse within the black culture. And the time I'm recording this episode, you go on to Kamala Harris website. There is no policies on her website. D check out this screen recording of Kamala Harris website. As you can see, once you come into the website, you see that 
you could hit a button to donate, right? $25 up to $5,000 or other, right? $47, I guess, to become the 47th president. Click the next link. There's still the same buttons to chip in. Then after that, you see a picture of Kamala Harris saying that we could win this together. Join the campaign, you put your email in, right? Then there's buttons on the bottom that you could click. Click the store. She has merch on her website before she had policies. So you could buy a sticker. You could buy a mug. You could buy a t-shirt. Um, you could buy baby hats. You could buy dad hats. You could buy can coolers. You could buy tote bags. You could buy Kamala Harris pride stickers. So these are the things that you could buy. Or these are the things that you could do on Kamala Harris website. There is not, there is not anything on his website as far as policies. She's running on just vote for me because I'm a black woman or because I'm a woman of color. She's not running on anything. That is problematic that a woman could come out and come out and say, all right, I'm running for presidency. And she's not running on anything. And we come together as a group and raise two million dollars for her. I said it was a gift because we know that we have to put money behind a politician, but it's also a curse because we did it blindly. That's sad. That's sad. And that's problematic in my opinion. And not to mention too, I'm going to say this because like I said, I wasn't on the call, but I talked to people who were on the call. And one thing that people were saying about Kamala Harris uh, video calls was that people were critical of raising money for a politician that didn't lay out a plan. And some people were saying that, why not we have our resources to put in for a super PAC, right? So a super PAC is a political action committee. The organizations that raise and spend unlimited amounts of money to influence elections. If we now know that we could put our money together, why not raise money for a super PAC? And when people were on that call and said those things, from what I heard, right? I could be wrong. Maybe I got some wrong information, but from what I heard, people who said those things on those calls were kicked out of those calls and blocked from that call. It wasn't a matter of, should we do something more constructive? It was a matter of, put your money behind this woman because this is a woman of color, a sister girl, a Howard alum, a AKA that is running for president. That's what I got from people who were on that call. They said that's, that's what it was about. It wasn't about uh, critical ideas or constructive ideas of coming together or being free thinkers of coming together. Perhaps there's another way of doing things. No. Put your money behind this woman and shut up. That's what that call was. That is a curse. That is a toxic tradition that shows that we will get behind anybody just because how they look. Yeah, the fact that it was something that came together and organized and raised money was a good idea. But this right here shows that the toxic tradition of just supporting somebody because of their skin color. I show you the website. There is nothing on there on what she's running on. Nothing. It just say, give me money. And the crazy part about it, during Kamala Harris um, rally in Atlanta, she said, go on my website and donate. In fact, after I announced my candidacy, we saw the best week of grassroots fundraising in presidential campaign history. And if you go to KamalaHarris.com, you can help us build on that success. This is this is crazy. This is crazy, but it shows that we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. The next curse I want to address on this episode is the newest divide between black men and black women because of the nominee of Kamala Harris running for presidency. If you guys have been paying attention to the political landscape, um, black men are stepping away from the Democratic Party, right? Black men are stepping away from the Democratic Party. They're realizing that the Democratic Party is not aligned with their values and how they live their life. And I get it. I understand that. Right. 
I'm not arguing with any black man saying I'm stepping away from the Democratic Party. I understand why a black man would step away, right? But I also understand why a black man would stick with it. But there are more black men that are stepping away from this. And now that you have a black woman or a woman of color, we'll get to that later, a black woman or woman of color running for a presidential campaign, if a black man do not blindly support this woman, it's going to be problems. This It's going to be problems because if Kamala Harris lose, right, and black men don't quote unquote show up for Kamala Harris in the correct way or the way that Democrats, liberals, or black women see fit, you're going to be blamed for it. You're going to be blamed for Kamala Harris losing. That's the way the game goes. I'll give you guys case in point out here in Georgia. Stacey Abrams going against Brian Kemp. When Stacey Abrams lost on social media, it was black men. Black men is the reason why she lost. Not she ran a poor campaign, not that she didn't address any black issues. No, that wasn't it. It was black men didn't come out and vote for her. Y'all didn't want to vote for this black woman. Y'all intimidated by this black woman. It was proven to be wrong that black men did support Stacey Abrams. Not in the large clip that they expected, because I didn't vote for her. Honestly, I voted for Kemp. I voted for Kemp. I thought Kemp was a better um, governor, right, in Georgia. And I didn't want to go the direction of a, a liberal, extreme left-leaning liberal governor of a state, you know, coming from New York. I didn't want that. I didn't want to live in a state like that. So I voted for Kemp. But... Black men was blamed for that. You say that you are disrespecting the culture as a black man if you don't support this black woman. I want to read this tweet to you right here from Serbia Whitaker, right? She says, I truly believe that white women have learned their lesson and would do right by Kamala. It's the black man we have to worry about. I, I, I showed you on the last reason that Kamala Harris have nothing on her, po no, no policies. No policies on her website about what she's going to do as a as a president if she get elected. But we have tweets like this saying that it's black men we have to worry about. Then another tweet that came out that I want to bring up to you guys is from the uh, Isaac Hayes III, the CEO of social media platform Fanbase. And this is the reason why I was critical of Isaac Hayes. I'll tell you why after the quote. But he says this. FYN, FYI to black men. Black women are watching you try to tear down an overqualified black woman for trying to fulfill her purpose, break barriers, and accomplish her dreams. Your mothers, grandmothers, sisters, wives, and daughters would be ashamed seeing you act like this. You look small, insecure, and weak doing so. So me using my political power to vote for the best candidate that is fitting to my lifestyle and just so happens that candidate is not Kamala Harris. I look weak and small and insecure doing that. Kamala Harris did not give you any reason on her website why to vote for her. But me not supporting her, I look weak, insecure. And my wife, my mother, my grandmother, sister, wife, whatever, all these people, daughters would be ashamed of me for not blindly supporting somebody who have nothing on their website. I mean, if that's what you want to do, have at it. I'm not mad at you. Those are the type of shaming that black men will start going through if we don't fall in line. Black men are stepping away from this, this party, stepping away from it. And you guys trying to shame black men to vote the way you think is going to work. That's not working no more. Black men is not falling for that tactic no more. It used to be a tactic at work. Like, yeah, man, let me just say these things about some folks and they're going to fall in line. It used to work. It's not working no more. But the shame of the black men, right? Saying that black men got to fall in line or like the Roland Martin shirt, vote like a black woman. Those things don't just start with the black men. They also start with anybody black that's not falling in line. Like I, I, I mentioned Amanda Sales and the backlash she's getting just for questioning Kamala Harris and saying that Kamala Harris is ingenuous. She's getting back backlash for that. There was a post from Joy Reid, and she said, 
Hey fam, okay, I just gotta say it. I just gotta say it. Given the just stratospheric entrance of Vice President Kamala Harris into the presidential campaign, and she has now secured enough delegates to become the nominee, you're gonna look real crazy being on the other side of that line particularly as a person of color, but really as anyone who claims to have any connection to the culture, you're gonna look real weird and real lonely on that side. The door needs to close behind Amber and she look crazy over there, but shut the door behind her. You really are gonna look crazy being on that side, given the cultural phenomenon of Vice President Kamala Debbie Harris. Dre Reed of MSNBC of The Readout, she said Americans of color are going to look real crazy and weird if they don't vote for Kamala Harris. If you don't fall in line, there's a level of shame. That's a toxic tradition. Because we say statements like our ancestors died for us to vote. Or I guess our vote have to be Democrat in order to honor our ancestors. Even though Historically, Democrats was the one that held our ancestors in bondage. If we don't fall in line, it's going to become this big divide within the black culture. We see it being played out already. We saw it being played out here in Georgia because Stacey Abrams lost to Brian Kemp. And I guess because of men like me who voted for Brian Kemp, that was my best interest. The last topic I want to discuss and a lot of y'all ain't gonna like this, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. The last topic I wanna discuss is Kamala Harris' background and racial identity. The toxic tradition of who is black, how is black, what is black, the goalposts is always moved on how we like this person. Let me explain. Um, Kamala Harris, right, she identified herself as being black and South Asian, right? She says she's black because her father is Jamaican and she's South Asian or Indian because her mom is of Indian descent. So her father, Donald Harris, is Jamaican. And her mother, um, ooh, I can't pronounce his name, Shia Mala Goblin Harris is Indian. So that gives her a mixed racial identity, right? People are saying that Kamala Harris now want to be black when she need to be black or need to be Indian when she's Indian. Kamala Harris is both. But I think that, in my opinion, she should be able to claim being black, in my opinion, right? Because Jamaican is black when it is and Jamaican is black when it's not. So if she wants to identify as black, I think that's not a problem. But for some people, Kamala Harris identifying as black is an issue. I just think that the goalpost is always moved on who is black and who is not. And I think that's our fault. We didn't put down the real guidelines of what black is. We just went off of our skin color, right? I've heard things saying that if your mom who raised you was not black, you're not black. I heard things like that. Then I see people like J. Cole, who is black, but his mom is white. But then Drake, who isn't black, who mom is white, and both of them got black dads. I don't know how this work. It always seemed like to be real convenient. So people who are mixed, how how you claim black or how you don't claim black? What is the what is the guidelines? What's the terms and conditions of claiming black? I I would say that Kamala Harris could claim black, in my opinion. She could claim black if the terms and conditions is what? Her lifestyle, her upbringing, how many descendants of slaves are from America? Is it the skin color? Because I'll put it like this. We said, <laughs> we said it was okay to call Bill Clinton the first black president because this man played a saxophone on a senior hall. But then now you want to move the goalposts and saying Kamala Harris is not black, even though she went to an HBCU, graduated from Howard, and she's an AKA. To me, those fit more of a criteria of being black than a white man playing a saxophone on a talk show 
a late night TV talk show with shades on. But we was okay with calling Bill Clinton black, but not okay calling Kamala Harris black. Which, which one is it? The goalposts is always move within the culture when it comes to who's black and who's not. And the way that this country is going, there's going to be more racially mixed people, right? There's going to be more Kamala Harris's. There's going to be more J. Cole's. There's going to be more Barack Obama's. There's going to be more Drake's. So this should be put together, buttoned up, and understand what is the criteria, if, it is, if there's going to be a criteria of what is black. Because we let Clinton become black, but not Kamala Harris. I don't get it. I really don't get that. Thank you guys for checking this episode out, man. So my final thoughts, man. This was a gift and a curse. There were things that we have never seen before within our culture, but there's also things that we've stick to time and time again. Let me know how you feel about this in the comments, man. Or if you guys listening to this on, you know, audio platforms, email me, Leron at brokentraditions.com and also leave a review. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate the time. All right, man. Till next time. Peace. Real Rap Ron is signing off. All right. Later. One.